Thanks for tuning in here to ProLine TV. And if you haven't showed up here on ProLine TV, because we are still, of course, posting our horse racing shows on our horse racing channel uh, over on Horsepower PSN, please make your way over to ProLine TV. We have a link in the description. You want to subscribe here because soon enough, this is where all of our horse racing program is going to be, or a majority of our horse racing program, and including our bonus picks are still going to be available here on ProLine, or at least we're going to be making them available here on ProLine TV to make sure that you can come on over here and spend your time with us. And I'm Greg DePama, John Hardoon, joining me from the Raggers and Sheets. And John, uh, we have some racing at Aqueduct to talk about. Uh, is it going to snow on uh, Saturday? Hopefully not. It's going to snow up in Saratoga, but not down at Aqua. By the way, congratulations. You had a nice winner. By the way, people that will listen to this were pretty close to making a score because we ran first, third, and fourth. The two horses I like ran third and fourth. You managed to give out the winner. And those horses, by the way, they were all big prices. The the favorite jumped up and uh, kind of messed us up. But that's old news. That was in the ninth that he messed us up? The grass race. Yeah, you had you liked the six who won. Oh, that's right. Me, Hermano, Ramon. Correct. And that's I because liked, I liked Easter and uh, the five horse. The five horse was like 35 to one. Easter got bet to eight to one. But your horse, I think, was nine, 10, 11 to one. So you did uh, yeah. a great job. Oh, that was the one where the the favorite uh, – is that the what one where the favorite came in and screwed up the big exacta? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it would have been big too, believe me. Yes, that screwed us otherwise. And then what did we do with the – Hollywood? because the Hollywood Derby, that was the big race uh, last week. And uh, mm. who won that race? That was the six, right? Was that the six? That was uh, – no, was it? No. Was that the me or no? Was that that race? No, the Hollywood Derby was the uh, the 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 other. That was race number nine last week, and um, I'm trying to remember, I usually write it down here. Who was the winner? I don't who know was in the race? Just that. tell me. Give me some names in the race. I'll tell you who. Uh, won. Formidable man, on a goal momentum. Adelton. Ad I think uh, formidable man. What was that? The Jonathan Thomas horse was he the trainer? No, that is Michael McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. Stay hot. Rothschild. Remember Rothschild? Oh, Rothschild. Yeah, he's shot. Done. I'm done. I'm done with him. They bet him all the way down, too. He's, he, he was horrible. No excuse. Pratt was on him. He was sitting there and came up completely empty. King of Gosford. Uh, Carson's run. No, he didn't even win Carson's runs. He was one of the favorites. I don't uh, remember. Anyway, don't we remember. didn't win. But that was the big race last week, and unfortunately, we didn't get that one. But, hey, one of the two ain't bad, especially with a – a nice little priced horse. So uh, we are now going to uh, talk about two more races this week. Uh, these are going to be at Aqueduct again. And uh, what was last week? Last week was at Del Mar, right? Yes, sir. So we're West Coast, East Coast. Uh, so we're going on all coasts. Uh, now, there are three grade two stakes races uh, at this track. Now, there, it's seven, eight, and nine. And we're doing nine. That's the biggest one of the weekend, the Cigar Mile Handicap. Now, the seven and eight, uh, those those have the uh, the two-year-olds. The, right. The, the, there, there's derby points and, and Oaks points involved there. You get 10 points. But they're lightly raced horses. And to be honest with you, the favorites in both of those races, the Chad Brown horse and the Brad Cox horse, really just look like they lay over the field. They're going to be short prices. So people don't want to tune in here to get three three dollar and eighty cent horses. It's just no. <laughs> they got yeah. better things to do with their time. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing because uh, the, yeah, it looks like the two favorites in that race. That's uh, their their sheet numbers are just so much better than every other horse in the field. So yeah, but there's also a problem. As good as they look, there's still question marks because uh, most of those horses have never been that far. They're yeah. going two turns for the first time. Most of them. And, you know, do you want a better short price horse on something he's really never done before? Probably not. So they're good races to watch for sure. You know, these are possible future stars of the game. Yep. That being said, uh, you don't really want to gamble on those races. Yeah, you are going to give a free pick away, though, to anybody. And by the way, we're still – any free picks that we do provide uh, over on – well, depending on where you're watching this, of course, uh, on ProLine TV – uh, is going to also still be on our Patreon. So as long as we have members that are still paying us on Patreon, anytime we have free picks, not only will, be, will they uh, be on ProLine, but they're also going to be on our Patreon. 
so uh, and, and, and that's the 10th race at Aqueduct. 10th race. Okay. Yeah. All so right. that, well, that's let's good. Get, let's get so, the show on the road. So we're going to have a ninth and 10th uh, exact uh, double possibility. So let's start with the fourth. Uh, this is the one that we did decide to go on as our second race. The, mile, the both mile races today, the go for wand. It's a grade three, 200,000 for Philly mares, three-year-olds up. And the favorites, you get the three and the one. You've got a cult, the five to two shot is the three. The one is the three to one shot, Tizzy in the sky. And the big difference here that you notice is the fact that Tizzy in the sky is not raced since June. So he's on a six month layoff. And whereas the three uh, is not. So I think that is definitely one of the big things that I noticed, uh, which is why out of the two favorites, uh, I would be leaning towards the three. What about you? How did you break down both of these uh, favorites? Yeah, I would definitely be leaning towards the three also. I mean, recency, the one is getting Pratt for the first time, so obviously that counts for something. But but he's com she's coming off of a layoff, and she always doesn't do her best running the first race back off of a layoff, if you notice. Last year off of a long layoff, she came back and ran at 26. <laughs> yes. even, even this year off the layoff, she ran a, a 14. Problem with her is her last race was not good. She did have some trouble in it, but it also resulted in a layoff since June, like you said. So this horse was last seen, by the way, at uh, Saratoga at, uh, well, well, I guess it was Belmont at Saratoga. This may have even been uh, Belmont Stakes Day when she read, last ran. It was the Ogden Phipps. It was a stake race on the undercard of the Belmont Stakes. So I think it was the 8th or the 7th. I know they were up in Saratoga for that race. Anyway, all that being said, I would definitely try to beat the one. I like the three the best. Occult, uh, you want hookups? What do you want to go through it? What do you want to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, the only other, I mean, if you're taking a look at uh, the only other horses or the horse that I like, um, I like the nine, I mean, the eight, excuse me. Um, and I know he doesn't have any single digit numbers, uh, but, uh, you know, I like the fact that at least you got Chad Brown with Dylan Davis is having a good meet. You know, he's got some wins at this racetrack. Uh, he's very consistent this year, all 11s and 12s. That's a good sign. Um, and, and it's not a, you know, a great field. It's a field that could definitely be up and be down. So yeah, I'm probably going to go with the, a three, eight deal. So what so you're going to go three on top and who, who else you like? I'm putting the seven and eight underneath ain't broke and shit a bitty booty. Like you said, ain't Brooks also coming off of a long layoff, but she'll at least be a price. She runs well, fresh. It's Linda Rice, always dangerous. And, uh, you know, three for six at Aqueduct, two for six at the distance. So the horse certainly could handle the track. Three was seven, eight. Yeah, the seven and the eight both have three out of six wins at Aqueduct. So that's good. Statistically speaking, mm -hmm. uh, it's, not a bad I it's not a bad idea uh, for both of those horses. Okay, so there you go. A uh, bunch of five and six to one shots. But this is the go for uh, one stakes, by the way. It was the yep. fourth race on Saturday. So they're, and that's going to go off of a little after one o'clock Eastern on Saturday. So now uh, the big race of the week, and that is the Sakar Mile Handicap. It's a mile race, five hundred thousand dollar purse, three year olds and up, and the morning line uh, favorites. You have four that are kind of next to each other, but the the, the main uh, favorite is Mulliken, the five at three to one. Then you have the eleven post time at seven to two. We have the one book him down at four to one and the seven locked at nine to two. Uh, so this is a really good race. Uh, let's go through the field starting at the top. John, we'll start with the one book him down at four to one shot. Very solid and consistent this year. The sheet numbers say sixes, eights, nines. The horse has a grade one win. Uh, that was the race at Saratoga in June. Uh, by the way, uh, notice that, the horse was on the rail in that race, which is where he's at uh, today. I mean, Saturday. Is there a big difference between being on the rail at Saratoga compared to Aqueduct? No. I mean, you know, it's a mile shoot race. So you really don't, it's a little bit of a disadvantage breaking from the inside, but it, you could certainly win from there. Don't okay. get me wrong. And listen, I can, you can make a case honestly for at least four or five horses. Yeah. In this race. Book them yeah. down or could win. Mulliken could win. Locked could win. Senor Buscador has a shot. Post time 
uh, ran second in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Mulliken ran third in the, and was the favorite in the sprint race. So this race is really loaded with some really nice horses. Bookham Dano is another one of them. Okay, the two is a long shot, and then we're going to try to give you at least one of them. Um, Nelson Avenue, uh, one of those 30 to one shots. I mean, Wayne Potts is certainly off to a nice start so far here at Aqueduct. So is Dylan Davis. Ran an eight, two starts ago. So that's the thing that definitely sticks out, including the fact that the trainer and the, and, and the rider are as good as you're going to get in this race, or at least during this meet. So what about Nelson Avenue as one of the long shots? Well, this is a claiming horse. This doesn't even belong in this race. I mean, if he was going to decide to run that one eight that he once ran, yeah, he has a shot, but I don't think he's going to run it. I don't like this horse at all. Let's go with the three uh, repo rocks. Another 30 to one long shot. It does have a grade three win. Uh, that was, I believe, uh, back in May of 2023. So that was last year when he ran a three. Yeah. Uh, but the horse is getting older now. He's six years old, even though it's only been a year. But you do notice the fact that ever since the three, he's only had one single digit since then. That was a nine in August. Yeah, they should put RIP on the sheets because when you run a number like that, it usually finishes you. I mean, at the, as you know, he was a five-year-old. He ran a three. He actually ran a four two years ago. You know, this horse was is trained by Jamie Ness, who does uh, a lot of magical things with horses. He moves them way up. But he's had this horse. Dutro's had this horse. This horse is finished. I don't like it. Done. The four is Vin Sanity, a big long shot at 50 to one that ran an 11 in October. That race at uh, Aqueduct, that was the win in a claiming race. But uh, this horse has only won twice in 20 starts. Yeah, no, he's too slow, doesn't belong. The five is Mulliken. Now, Mulliken uh, it does look like the horse to beat here. You got Pratt on board. Uh, that's always good. Uh, if you take a look at grade one win, a grade two win, uh, has the win at Aqueduct, coming off the Breeders' Cup sprint race. By the way, if you look at that race, he was the, he was the favorite in that race. He was in the 10th post position, so I think he does have a little bit of an excuse there because he likes to be on the pole, wasn't able to get there. Uh, also, if you take a look at the numbers, 77568, that's really excellent. But the horse has never run a mile. He wants to lead. So is that a little bit of uh, something to be concerned about, a horse that wants to lead and it hasn't stretched out yet to a mile? Well, he doesn't necessarily need to lead. There are races, the bottom race uh, at Oakland, he got beat a nose coming from way out of it that day. The problem – and you hit it on the nose. The problem is he's never been this far, and he's going to be the favorite. I don't want to bet a favorite doing something. I would include the source. I would never key him. So for that reason, I am not. I mean, I'm not putting him on top. He certainly has a chance. So, you know, if he wins, I, I wouldn't be shocked. But I'm not playing him at, as the favorite, considering he's never been this far. Yeah, the interesting thing about this uh, race is you've got uh, the Mulligan that was the morning line favorite who wants to lead. He wants to go coast to coast. And then you've got the 11, which we'll talk about later, Post Time, who also is coming off a Breeders' Cup race, but Post Time is a closer. So a uh, nice little dynamic there with those two top morning line favorites. All right, let's go with the six, Law Professor. And uh, this is the long shot that I want to put into my exotics. Uh, I like the fact that um, he's got the six just a few starts ago. Bounced to the 22 and then came right back to the nine with a win at Aqueduct. Also, if, if you just look at the form in the last five races at Aqueduct, nine, six, 10, 10, eight. Always likes to race here. Five wins out of seven, getting 15 to one. So I'm definitely putting a law professor in my exotics. Well, on his best day, he certainly has a shot. There's no doubt about it. He goes back to Rob Atris, who trained him last time out when he got the nine back out of him. The race two starts back. He shipped to Oakland. Problem I have with this horse is that he went back on Lasix to run the nine last time out. Two starts back when he ran the 22, it was without Lasix. Well, maybe it was the wet track that he didn't like. I don't know. I could see making a case for him. I just think that uh, he's uh, seen better days. Again, he could certainly win. Uh, take uh, you know, but uh, I'm not using him. But I could see people that want to use him. I could see making a case for him. The seven is locked, uh, as you mentioned uh, before. Nine to two shot. You get Velasquez back to back after winning the last race uh, with this horse. Uh, this is a Pletcher horse. Has a grade one win. That was the win just before the Breeders' Cup Juvie race. 
What's interesting here is, you know, you look at a horse that comes out last year in August, uh, nothing special. A 13 is okay. Comes up 13, with a nine. 13 is good, but go ahead. For the first race, it's very yeah. good. Uh, second race, very good again, nine and a win. And, you know, blitz the field there. And all of a sudden, he's the morning line. Uh, he's the favorite, excuse me, for the uh, the grade one race in his third start. Wins that one. And it's the uh, favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juby race after three starts. It doesn't go well for him there, even though he runs a solid number, a nine. But then I got to ask a question then. So he doesn't race in nearly a year. So I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but he comes out his first race in an optional claimer. So why is that? Why, why would a trainer go out there and say, okay, look at this horse. He looks really good. I'm going to put him in an optional claimer his first time out. What they did, what, I, I, what I'm assuming they did, is the track rode a race for the horse. Pletcher had a horse that was, a, that, ran, that was the favorite in last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Stakes. Okay? He, was the, he has the horse ready to come back to racing. There's no race for him. So the racing secretary goes and puts a race together for him, and that's what they did. It's oh. not, that it's a, they, would, they would have run him anywhere. They needed a place to run him, so that's why they ran him there. The race was written for him that day. Okay. And there was a solid show after a year off with a seven. This is so my top, this is my top selection. This horse is very strong. When you see a two-year-old run two nines, that's oh, yeah. the, you have the potential to be a serious horse. And I think this horse has the makings of a serious horse. To run two nines and then come out as a three-year-old and run a seven, that's strong. Yes. Now uh, unfortunately, he's already three. It would have been nice to uh, see what he would have done if he was two. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> he he showed you what he did as two. He won two races. It was a little late in the year, races. unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, we want to have the – but he could have a really big 2025. So we're well, going to keep our eye on lock. He's going to be four years old next year, and he's going to be a stakes winner. He's yep. going to be a stakes winner after the Cigar Mile on Saturday. So, the, so being an optional claimer and winning the race, does that mean that anybody could have claimed the horse? No, no. Optional okay. claimer means you're in the race to either be claimed or not to be claimed. And there were horses to fill, to, to get enough horses in the field, they made it an optional claimer. Okay, so optional meaning, like if somebody wants the, the horse, trainer, what happens? No, the trainer has the option to run him for a tag or not for a tag. But you you state that before the race is Oh, ready. before the race, okay. Yes, all right. So it's basically, only, you have it's a, a only field of an optional claim. Whatever. Okay. So some horses in the race when it starts, you you know you can claim them. Some you can't. Exactly. Okay. All right. So that's the still locked. Uh, now move on to the eight pipeline. One of the long shots. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't like the fact you got a long shot who doesn't really show anything at this distance or at Aqueduct. The good thing is he's coming off at eight. His last time out, going wire to wire at Churchill. He ran some good numbers, a couple of sixes, but that was a couple of years ago when he was four years old. Um, yeah. Again, we're looking for a long shot. Uh, would this be a long shot? Or no. have we uh, not hit the long shot for you yet? No. Okay. No. Uh, the nine is Senor Buscador, and uh, I, we do it just about every one of his races. Uh, <laughs> six to one shot. Uh, and uh, I remember you, you, you mentioning in the Breeders' Cup Classic that you felt that uh, maybe uh, he was, I don't know whether he was burnt out or he's getting old or whatever the case may be, well, but he didn't show there as far six, as the result. But yeah. he did run to seven. Yeah, he's he's six years old. I could see using him if you want. You know, listen, he's a solid horse. C cover the 14 that he ran two starts back, and every other race is right there, isn't it? So Yes, it is. Not I only mean, that, is the six to one what, okay? Not only that, this is a one-turn mile, so it's not two turns, you know. So I think this horse is better around one turn. His running style, personally, he's going to be a lot longer than six to one. I think that's a bad morning line. Even though he did run in the Breeders' Cup Classic last time out, so maybe he will take some money. But I'm using this horse. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, Rosario is off to a really good start. At Aqueduct. At Aqueduct. Aqueduct. Right. Okay. Coastal Mission. Uh, a 12 to one shot and coastal emissions has got a grade three win. Uh, what I like about coastal emission here, a couple of things. Well, first of all, you got to be impressed by 14 wins out of 25. That's really good. He's over a million dollars. Um, he ran a five in his last race at aqueduct. Adam that, there should be his second to last race at aqueduct. That was in July. That seven furlong grade two race. 
And he finished second by just a little bit over a length to the current favorite of the race, Mulligan. So uh, now since then, he's run tens. But he yeah, does but, have wins yeah. in his last two races. So that's the whole point. Early this year, he ran a seven, finally got back to a five. And since he ran that five, the last three races, not even though he won two of the three, numbers-wise, they, they're not good. You know, the, the really basically the worst races he's run this year, 10, 10, 10. Before that, he had a five, a nine, a nine, a seven. You know, I, I don't like him. I don't. I think he's tailing off, even though he won. Okay. 11, post time. Now, here is the second choice we talked about. Now, this is one of those up and down horses. Uh, it's what we just... call an alternating line. Good race, bad race, good race, bad race. Yep. So, now he's coming off a seven, and that means that he might be race. having a bad one. And it it's could be a, a double digit because two of his, excuse me, his last three bad ones have been in the double digits. Correct. Um, but yeah, we can see why he's the second choice. He's coming off finishing second in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Yeah. I've ran a seven yeah. in that race. This is the closer, so he's going to need a really, you know, a favorable pace. Uh, pace. We'll we see if that'll a, happen. A, a duel up front. So, uh, what do you like or don't like about post time? I don't like the price, and I know he's going backwards. So, why would I like him? You know, simple. Yeah, that, that, that's a, Give me a long shot in the field. Who's your best? Who's your favorite long shot? Long shot. Long shot would probably be your horse, Law Professor. Okay. If I had to pick a big bomb. That would be it. But all right. So, all you right. know, Bruce Goodall might go off at fifteen to one. I don't think so because he's coming out of the Breeders' Cup Classic. Maybe. Okay. Listen, uh, but I'm not betting the favorite. I'm betting a horse that's nine to two, and I think you'll get the nine to two unlocked. I like the seven. I'm putting them in exactas over the one Bookham Dano, the five Mulligan, and the nine Senor Buscador. Seven over one, five, and nine. All right. And I'm going to go with the five, and I'm going to go with the five over the one and the six Law Professor. So those are the two big marquee races we're handicapping here today. Now, if anybody has uh, not yet become a member on Patreon or uh, has relinquished uh, their memberships on Patreon. Uh, th the rest is not for you, but all you have to do, simple, is go over free to YouTube. If well, you're watching YouTube right now, so all you have to do is go to our new channel, Proline TV. The links in the description. We have two links. We have one in the description area. Just click the more button. If you if you see, you don't know where it is. Just click more. Or at the top of the comment section, I pin the link at the very top. We're going to just take a look at that. Click the yep. link to ProLine TV. Boom, you're right there. And then you'll be able to find out uh, the entire show, which is not edited because we're going to leave now here for you. And by the way, these shows that you're watching right now are only available on the day of the races here on uh, Horsepower PSN. So if you want to find out what's going on on Thursdays, Go over to ProLine TV and watch the races, watch the show, which will be posted every Thursday. Next week, we might post on Friday, depending on John's schedule, but it's always usually Thursday or Friday at ProLine TV. So uh, for everybody on YouTube, don't forget still, like, share, subscribe. Still do that here on Horsepower PSN because, hey, if for whatever reason you want to hang out here, that's great. No problem. Just make sure you subscribe at least. Um, don't forget to subscribe over on ProLine TV as well so you don't miss a thing. We'll see you next time. All right. So we are still here, of course, for you ProLine TVers or anybody who is still a member of, on uh, Patreon because we have a free pick that John wants to share with you today. This is going to be the race right after race nine at Aqueduct, the Cigar Mile Handicap, the one we just did. So, John, you like race number 10 for a free pick, and this is a another mile race. Uh, $92,000 purse race. Uh, what, what do you like here, the three-year-olds and up race? I love the eight. Quick to uh, <clears throat> accuse. A four-year-old called from the Brad Cox Barn. Manny Franco rides. Cox Barn's been on fire. I think they're seven for 14 or seven for 15 at the meet. The list that four to one. The edge in the race is I don't like the favorite, number seven, Reynolds Channel. I don't like that horse at all. She's three to one. I'm going to put the eight, quick to accuse, and exact is over. The four, commuted. The six, Treaty Obligation, and the 10, Night Effect. Eight over the four, six, and 10. And the numbers on uh, to eight, are they pretty good? 
Yeah, he runs 11s, 10s. You have sheets. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I closed it for whatever stupid reason. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then – By uh, the way, he's, he has, uh, he's two for five at the distance. Uh, races three and four starts back, both at Aqueduct. The, the, the race three starts back was a mile, same distance that this race is. Since Cox took over the training, the horse has gotten really good. What's the name of the horse again? Quick. To accuse. Okay. Yeah. All right. Eight. I'm looking at it now. Got to it. Accuse. Okay. Three elevens in the last four races for this horse, and uh, and then the rest of it is four, six, and ten. And and by the way, you would, as far as those two grade, uh, those two grade two races, including the Remsen, you would, you don't really, you you, you would still like, hey, you know what, the pro the favorites are probably going to win those two races. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, so there's really no way to make any money off of the seventh and the eighth. No, but we might as well give them the names of the horses so they know. In the seventh race, it's Key Waden, Key Waden, the five horse, and in the eighth race, it's the one Muhima. So you're talking about a six to five and a four to five. The double's probably paying three dollars. Again, good race to watch. I don't know if you want to bet it. We are out of here. We're going to be back next week. No graded stakes races next week, but I think we're looking at Gulfstream Park. We have not. Uh, talked about Goldstream Park in a while, well, but their their championship meet opened on Thanksgiving, so they've only had a few days of racing so far, and uh, they reopened today. They're closed uh, Monday. They run Thursday through Sunday, so. and uh, we're going to start doing a lot more Goldstream from now through the Florida Derby. So, John, appreciate it. Have a great week. You too, my friend. Be well and stay safe. We'll talk to you during the week. Thanks.